2022 Albemarle County Planning Commission. Thank you for coming this evening. Uh, so first announcement, uh, we the opportunities for the public to access and participate in the hybrid meeting are posted on the Admiral County website on the Planning Commission homepage and on the Admiral County calendar. Participation will include the opportunity to comment on those matters for which comments from the public will be received. Uh, so when we do the public hearings, by the way, I usually take any public in person first before uh, we take the online comments. Okay, so I'd like to uh, call the roll. If we could just uh, call the roll and Maybe the easiest way to do that is to just go down the line, starting with Luis, just say your name and present. I can call the, the roll if you want me to. Oh, okay, okay, voice from above, Carolyn Schaefer. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> okay, I, I didn't mean to minimize you, just trying to make it easy, but go ahead. <laughs> That's okay, okay. Uh, Ms. Firehawk? I am present. Mr. Claiborne? Present. Mr. Missile? Here. Mr. Carizana? Here. Mr. Bivens? Grounded. Mr. Murray? Here. Thank you. Okay, we have established a quorum. <laughs> Sorry about that. Never mind over here. All right, so the first item of business is other matters not listed on the agenda from the public. Is there anyone from the public who would wish to speak on a matter that is not on tonight's agenda? Seeing no one rush the podium, we'll move on to the next item, the consent agenda. And I believe we have the minutes on the consent agenda. Thank you. Yes, the August 23rd minutes, which I did proofread, send a couple of notes on. Would anyone like to pull that item from the consent agenda? Okay. What well, is there a motion to accept uh, the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Is there a second? Second. All right, it's been motion and seconded. Any discussion? None. Uh, Carolyn, can you call the vote? Yes, Ms. Firehawk? Ms. Firehawk? Yes. Mr. Claiborne? Aye. Mr. Bivens? Yes. Mr. Murray? Aye. Mr. Missile? Aye. Mr. Carizana? Yes. Thank you. Okay, the consent agenda is accepted. We'll now move on um, to the public hearings for this evening. Uh, the first public hearing scheduled is for SP 20220003, Daylily Preschool. May we have the staff report? Good evening, Chair Firehawk and members of the Planning Commission. My name is Kevin McCollum, and I'm a senior planner with the Planning Division of Almar County Community Development. Tonight, I'll be giving staff's presentation on special use permit application SP 2022-3 Daylily Preschool. This is a proposed special use permit amendment for an existing preschool facility. The subject property is located at 4281 and 4297 Old Three Notch Road. It's located east of the Crozet development area and just north of the intersection of Three Notch Road, Rockfish Gap Turnpike, Ivy Road, and Browns Gap Turnpike. Specifically, the property is two separate parcels, one that is home to an existing church and the other an existing dwelling. The properties are at the intersection of Browns Gap Turnpike and Old Three Notch Road. As I mentioned, the property is home to a church in an existing dwelling, the subject preschool currently op operates at the Sunday school building at the church. The existing zoning of the property and the surrounding area is rural areas. The character of the surrounding area includes rural area uses, including low density residential, agricultural, and some vacant undeveloped land. <clears throat> The applicant has requested a special use permit amendment to move the preschool from the Mountain Plain Baptist Church to the existing dwelling and increase the maximum number of children from 20 to 35 with a maximum of five teachers. The proposed preschool would operate from 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and would utilize the existing structures and playground areas. The conceptual plan provides an overview of the proposed site layout. Minimal site changes will be made. Parent, parents and teachers will utilize the existing parking areas. 
and parents will escort their children down to the preschool. A do not enter sign will be provided at the entrance to the preschool to prevent parents from turning in. There is an existing playground behind the church and one will be added behind the preschool. On the screen are the factors favorable. The use is consistent with the comprehensive plan and the rural area plan. The proposal provides a preschool daycare option for people who live and work in the area. There are no detrimental impacts to adjoining properties anticipated. Um, and the applicant has provided striping to the parking lot, which will increase safety. Uh, staff did not identify any unfavorable factors. The staff uh, con concludes by recommending approval with the following conditions. Uh, these conditions are in your staff report. So that concludes staff's presentation. There are motions on the next slide, but are there any questions at this time? Thank you. All right, any questions for staff? Mr. Bivens? Can you give us a sense of um, what staff's position was on having a census of 50 students? So transportation planning um, had a big comment on that. They were concerned about the amount of ex existing parking and the potential for uh, cars to back up um, onto the existing road. So their first comments were um, suggesting a, a decrease in number of students. And when the applicant resubmitted with a number of 35, they thought there was sufficient space on site for the pick up and parking uh, for those students. So that was being, so, so the modification was the applicant sort of hearing the concerns as, as expressed by our staff. Um, but I'm also assuming there was not, probably not a, a, um, a traffic study done there. No, there was no traffic study done at this time. So, okay. Because it's a pretty, it's a pretty isolated place out there. There's not a lot of traffic. So I'm wondering, I was really sort of struggling with, well, maybe at some point you can give us more. I was struggling with, with what, the, what the deal was that we couldn't have just go immediately go to 50 as opposed to having- Or, or they to, come back in two years and ask for 50 right, more right, people. Right, and right, yeah. It's it, just like- Yeah, I, I thought yeah, the same I, thought. Everybody, I, everybody knows that. I was like, if we can handle it, why force yes. the applicant to come back? But, you know, I'll, I will be quiet for a moment and- and wait until later okay. to push my point. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Uh, plus one, uh, Commissioner Bivens. Um, for my knowledge, does this go to a site plan review? I should know this. There's no existing site plan on site. Um, so if that is the case, if it doesn't, that's why I was asking. I wasn't quite sure. Who will be responsible for making sure, you know, accessibility, right, with the parking spots or how they get to the buildings right from their car. Sure, there, there will be building permits required uh, before the preschool opens and also zoning clearance. So the inspections department and at least zoning will be out there inspecting the site to make sure it's safe and accessible. And so if the, um, and thank you for the answer. So the drawings don't show any, at least the ones I've seen, they're kind of like napkin sketches. Mm -hmm. Just how do you close the gap there, right? I'm assuming that's what gets submitted. Somebody comes out and looks at it. How do you know how many handicapped spots you need or just want to close that loop? Sure. Uh, some of the reviewers have provided comments to the applicant already, um, you know, talking about potential building permits they need. Um, but, yeah, we could certainly follow up with the applicant if there's anyth anything else of concern. But at this time, staff didn't note anything that uh, was typically, typically concerning on this. Um, the zoning clearance process um, would include another site inspection and verific verification that any um, of the conditions are met. Um, that's as far as closing the gap, that would probably be what's required in this case because there isn't anything that's triggering the need for a site plan. Thank you. Okay, any other questions for staff? Yes, go ahead. I just have a quick question about uh, water and sewer and just looking through the uh, information. I know they there was correspondence back in June and July about this, and it's not that much of an you know increase in student body. But do you know whether or not they have the water and sewer necessary? And at what point does that get confirmed? 
Yeah, the health department with this, the second submittal uh, provided their approval of up to 50 students. Oh, they um, did. Okay, great. At least five staff. So great. And that's with that non transient. Yep. So it was for water and sewer consumption. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. So uh, there's no other questions for staff at this time. We can hear from the applicant. So when you come up, just uh, please state your name and who, and who you represent. Into You can bend that down. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Elizabeth Clayman, and I'm currently the director and lead teacher at Daylily Preschool. Um, we've been in operation for over 10 years. Um, the program, the proposed program would run from 830 to 530, Monday through Friday throughout the school year. Um, the ages of the children would be 16 months to five years. Um, I'm looking at a maximum of, of 35 children at this time and five teachers. Um, the parents are going to park in the front of the church and the teachers are going to park in the side behind. Yeah. Um, Daylily will play an essential role in the community uh, because it will prepare children socially, cognitively, and um, physically for kindergarten. Uh, the children learn reading, art, math, and social skills in a safe, nurturing environment. Um, They'll be actively involved in daily small group activities and instruction. Um, as a reading specialist, I will individ individualize the daily lessons for all enrolled children and implement them with the four and five-year-old children. Um, the children will be immersed in a language-rich environment. They were read multiple books daily. Alphabet um, will be taught through exposure to letters and letter sounds, writing, rhyming, and poetry. Um, the intention is to serve Western Albemarle community. The preschool will be operated from an existing building with no major exterior park or parking lot changes planned. Uh, a preschool in Western Albemarle will reduce the traffic from Crozet area into Charlottesville. And Daylily will continue to provide a local option for a fast growing area. Is that it? It. That's fine. It's <laughs> fine. You, you don't have to use all the time. More to add if you'd like me to continue. <laughs> sure. sure. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for the applicant at this time? We have to go through the motions, even though I don't see anyone from the public who's going to come and testify. But okay. <laughs> go ahead. Good evening. Thank Hi. you for being here. So, can you tell me in the from the the house, which is behind, sort of behind and to the right of the church? I assume that's what we're talking about there. Yes. Vacant. Okay. Will there be a path until you get the? Will there be a path from there to the existing playground, or are you only going to concern put a new playground in and all that activity, child activity, will take place at the at the house new new daycare center? So the plan is to use both and have the younger children use the current playground on the side, and then the older children use the play. They, there's a large backyard in the back um, with the older children. So we would use both. Would you both. And so you'd have some path to get the children, the younger children up there without having to use the, the driveway, or would you use oh, the I, So it's, it's in essence, like almost like a, I don't want to say field, but it's, it's, there's, there's no traffic or anything there. It's just grass that goes okay. across. Okay. And and I you may have heard my my question earlier about um about 50 being having a census of 50 and um understanding that you responded to the comments from staff uh to, to go for 35, I think it's 31, right? Um is if you could see through this process as it goes before the board of supervisors, would it be helpful for you to have 50? Could you could you accommodate 50 students under the under what you might envision the staffing and, and the structure? That was the original plan. And you know, I had worked through all of that thinking that that could work. But then, you know, after meeting with um uh, everyone here in the county, um, it, it sort of seemed as a, though the parking could be an issue um, in traffic. But that, other than that, I felt like I could make it work in the space. Okay. Well, I would just sort of add, so I assume when they have church there, they have more at least 50 people there on a Sunday. Absolutely. And, okay. So I will just sort of put that in as a pin. Thank you. To return to later, perhaps. Okay. okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Nope. <laughs> I can't see both ways at once. I'm sorry. Go ahead. All right. 
Um, this is a follow on to that, that last question. Um, how far out in the future does 35 kind of get you in terms of you know, your growth and so forth, if you had the estimate? <clears throat> Well, the area is growing so much that generally I'm full, you know, January of the, you know, for the following school year. So I have a large waiting list and that's sort of why I decided to go, you know, move forward with this. So my thought is I wouldn't have an issue filling it. And I think it, you know, could be a possibility that I, I try again, wow. if that's your question. Yes. Just thinking about what Commissioner Bivens has said and you having to continue to come back to ask for increases is where I was going at the root of that question. Um, as a follow-up, could you talk a little bit about you know, those various pickup times? I thought so there's three separate ones, like kind of half day, middle of the afternoon, end of day. Like what percentage, if you had to guess, are being picked up out of those 35 to 50 kids are being picked up, if you had to guess, for each one of those? So I believe I'd say... Um, about 60% are going to get picked up at 1230. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, it helps me understand kind of like the, the traffic, at least in the afternoon. Um, and then last question is more just trying to understand your business and kind of like uh, your vision and values and so forth. But could you talk a little bit about the demographics of, of the students? We just spent almost two hours in a work session talking about equity, for example, right? So could you talk a little bit about the demographics and whether it's gender or socioeconomic or race, whatever, but of the student body? And that'd be all for my questions. Uh, so I think my school is a representation of the Western area. Um, majority of my children go to Crozet Elementary or go to um, uh, Merriweather or go to um, Brownsville. And so it's a very similar demographic as to those children that attend those elementary schools. Any goals to change that or? Um, I would be happy to, you know, um, change that. Absolutely. I think a little bit of it's just getting the travel, you know, to us would might be a challenge, but um, I'd be happy to look into that. Okay. Any other questions? Just yes. a quick question. Assuming that we um, <clears throat> recommend approval of this, one of the conditions of staff is that the hours of operation for the preschool shall be limited to 8.30 to 5.30 Monday through Friday. Um, before that gets inked as a condition, is that suitable or do you have, I, I mean, they're, you know, young to five-year-olds, but do you have other uh, events on weekends that you might want to have that flexibility to have it open at other times for special events or whatever? I, well, I haven't done that in the past, to be okay. honest. Um, when we do a special event, we usually do it during the week, during the school week. Got it. Okay, thanks. Okay, any other questions for the applicant? Okay, none at this time, so I have to go through this motion. All right, so uh, is there anyone from the public who would like to speak? Not on the Zoom call, there's not. Who's here to speak from the public, we'll go back to the applicant. <laughs> is there anything else that, that you would like to uh, tell us before we deliberate amongst ourselves? Just that I really enjoy what I do. I um, every day is a new adventure, and I learn so much from the kids and spending time with them. And the goal really is just to get them ready for kindergarten. And majority of my children lead, you know, leave knowing their letters, letter sounds, and are ready to read. So that's the plan to continue. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, so I'll bring it back uh, to the Planning Commission for discussion. Do you want to uh, bring it back up your point about numbers of students? Because it did sound like, I, I know that there needs to be room to accommodate the parking for the teachers and everyone. Uh, but on the other hand, we're I think we're also sensitive to small businesses having to go through this uh, complicated process multiple times. So, uh, and if there is some way that we could avoid that. So if I could ask Mr. McCullen to bring back the site plan, please, the, the, the overhead site plan. Yeah, sure. No, 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 the photo. Oh, okay. Yeah, the photo. I want to just sort of have some conversation about that. For Something funny happened dur during the oh, meeting where go our, off? the screen disappeared oh, for it disappeared. a second. It there disappeared. There you go. <laughs> you wanted the conceptual plan? Nope, just stop, stop. Nope, 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 nope. That's perfect. Right there's perfect. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> So I'm, I was trying to figure out sort of what the issue might be 
with the complaint because if you'll see where the where the n is under sign and then come all the way over to that tree over there off of 4281 and now that we know that people are going to be there that most that 60 percent of the population leaves at noon right I, I don't understand what the traffic jam might be so I should just I didn't understand that having gone out to the to the property as we usually do I just I didn't and now having that one piece of information that I was wanting you know like right. okay what's your what's your day what's your what's day look like here and when you tell me that 60 percent of your census is going to be gone by 12 then I don't understand why it why we couldn't offer 50 students and if it grows to that that's brilliant and if it doesn't grow to that that's brilliant too so that's the only thing, Chair, that I would like us to give some consideration to. All right. Would staff like to give them a chance to sure. respond? Uh, of course. Transportation planning was, um, you know, cognizant of the fact that a lot of the students were getting picked up at different times, so they weren't as concerned with afternoon traffic. It was the uh, the morning traffic. Uh, when they all get dropped off. Right. And so staff, and when we went out to the site, the parking lot was not striped at the time. Um, they've since striped it or attempted to stripe it. And I think there was just a large concern with if there were 50 students, you know, the number of cars that may be in a line um, trying to drop off students at that, that, you know, may leak over into the, the public road. So that, that was the main concern. Um, I'm not sure if there would be space for stacked parking in that parking lot it, it based on our site visit it appeared that it would be an area where you would pull off and park uh perpendicular um so you know facing the buildings you can see on the screen so perpendicular that way um it didn't appear that you could park multiple cars in that space so did, did anyone discuss the idea of uh, carpooling with the applicant does that, you know, I don't know if there are, if kids are in the, siblings. yeah, siblings or Brownsville Elementary School, right. you know, district and, you know, there's little Johnny and little Sarah. Are gonna we had a, we together. had a meeting and um, I can't remember, but it was brought up. I don't know the numbers of how many carpooled, uh, but that was discussed as a possibility to alleviate some of that. Okay. So it doesn't sound like there's a an obvious solution at hand to the stacking problem at this time. But it does it does it does sound solvable to me, but does so, I'm sorry I didn't hear the last part. I said it does sound solvable. solvable. It doesn't sound like it yeah. we mentioned um that this incremental increase does will not trigger a site plan. Okay. So if they're expanding parking and they have a need for expanded parking, then that would be um trigger the site plan process, which would, you know, delay the incremental increase and could, you know, would obviously add expense. And so I, I think I'm not going to speak for the applicant or Kevin, but I think this allows for that incremental increase with the existing parking areas workable and the existing buildings. Um, but we are approaching that threshold where um, probably the, the next point. increase would okay. be more substantial in terms of needing an, right. an engineered site plan. So I think that was probably a factor. Okay. Thank you. That was helpful. But we do we do keep that in mind when we work with with these um, these facilities because you know we have some that come back multiple times. Yes, we've seen them. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, Mr. Murray. Yeah, it's just just looking at that intersection that when eight ten is is closed. That's one of the few ways that alternative routes to get back to Crozet. For those of us who don't live in the neighborhood, that's 810. <laughs> yes. Oh, I said, so the, the road that goes between Whitehall and Crozet, um, when that's closed, as it, it's been many times due to down trees and whatnot, that's one of the few ways, alternate routes to get back into Crozet. And that turn is particularly sketchy. Yeah, it's, a, it's hard. Um, yeah. Are there any... Are there any plans to improve that turn from VDOT? Because it, right now it is it is quite dangerous. You can't really see other vehicles very well when you're making that turn. Right. Um, it, and so so it is it is it is quite a um, it's quite a sketchy turn. Got to hug the bank there. Yeah, you do. You have to. You have to. You do. <laughs> Put that Jeep and four wheel drive and just got it. <laughs> Well, it seems like maybe that's also another factor is that it's not enough traffic 
of cars to cause backing up into another intersection. That's good. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. But I think um, what Mr. Bibbins was saying is that it, he's satisfied that it's kind of, that it's all been considered uh, that it would be nice to go to 50 and just have done with it, but it could trigger a need for a site plan and more expense and more delay. And so uh, they may have, you may eventually get to 50, but you will do that slowly and as you, as you can afford it and have time to do all the extra planning that may be entailed just in going to 15 more. Um, so are there any other uh, concerns or questions or comments about this development? Um, I, I think it's a, uh, a fabulous service when anyone is willing to offer uh, more schooling opportunities for our little people. I'd like to go to your preschool, but I think I'm perhaps aged out. So um, with that, is there a motion or for, I don't hear any further discussion. What are you pointing at? All right. For the motion. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm really having tr trouble swiveling. <laughs> <laughs> still drinking coffee. Yeah. <laughs> still drinking coffee. Go ahead. Sure, they could put the motion back up. Here it comes. Oh, there and there were some conditions too. Yes. Potentially. Um, are the conditions different than the conditions in the staff report? No, no, no. Oh. I'm just re I'm just referencing okay. in case you wanted to pick at any of those. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I move to recommend approval of SP 2022-00003 Daylily Preschool with conditions as recommended in the staff report. Is there a second? Second. All right, it's been motion and second. Does anyone uh, wish to further discuss this application? Hearing no further discussion requested, can we have the roll call please, Carolyn? Yes. Ms. Firehawk? Aye. Mr. Claiborne? Aye. Mr. Missile? Aye. Mr. Bivens? Aye. Mr. Murray? Aye. Mr. Carizana? Aye. Thank you. All right. So you have a unanimous uh, recommendation to move it to the Board of Supervisors. They will have the final say. I don't know that we have a, a hearing date uh, scheduled for that yet, but it'll be a date to be determined. So best of luck to you. All right. We'll now move on to the second item in our agenda for public hearing, SP 2022-00009, Virginia Institute of Autism. Can we have the staff report? We'll give staff a second to get situated there. And, and Madam Chair, if we could clarify, these are two related uh, SP applications. Is the intent to make uh, the um, a single public hearing for each of these uh, special use permit applications? Oh, for the next two coming up? Yes, ma'am, they're associated. And so my recommendation is that we just clarify from the outset that it's a single public hearing. If that's the will of the commission, there'll be separate votes on each of the, um, of the special use permit applications. But my suggestion, if it's amenable to both the commission and the, and the presenter, is that they just be combined into a single public hearing. That's fine. So would we hear both uh, presentations and then have the one public hearing? If, I mean, if that if that works for both the applicant and the presenter and the commission, then that would be my suggestion. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So we'll hear the first one now. So um, the first that, part. That was what I was going to suggest is that we have the combined public hearing and then at the end you will take two separate actions. There's two separate SPs. Understood. 2022-09 for the school expansion. Um, to locate the um, elementary school programs um, beside where the existing um, adult programs in high school is, and then the uh, associated special use permit for standalone parking across the street. So jumping into that, um, this is the location map which shows um, the existing um, Virginia Institute of Autism facility that's at the corner of Greenbrier and Hillsdale Drive that was approved in 2019. And then right beside that, um, to the south being the building and existing parking that's proposed for um, the school, the expansion for the elementary school to locate, relocate from where they are in the city. Um, so everything would be in one place. Um, and then across the street, you can see where there is a vacant parcel that has an existing entrance. Um, this basically a field is where, um, when they need it, um, they would use that for employee parking. Um, the existing uh, zoning of the site in this area is um, commercial, C1. Um, private schools and standalone parking are by special use permit. There is some nearby residential um, plan unit development in the blue with um, branch lands and then I believe it's called Brook, 
Brook Mill. Uh, this is uh, just an overview of the proposal. I'm sure the applicant's going to go into um, a great bit more detail than this, but currently uh, the high school program or adult services uh, offers, um, serves 52 participants and approximately 69 staff members. Um, with the elementary school, that would bring the total across the two properties to 137 students and approximately 158 staff members. Again, I mentioned that the existing buildings would be utilized. There is a proposed outdoor play area um, that would be added to the site. And then the standalone parking would be across the street, um, accessible by the existing sidewalks and the crosswalk across Hillsdale Drive. That would be approximately 166 spaces. So this is just an overview of their concept plan. Um, this is a situation where uh, there would be obviously a, a detailed site plan for the parking area that would include all of our landscape requirements for street trees, screening, parking lot, landscaping, and tree canopy. Um, that's not shown because this is just a concept plan and that would come with the, with the site plan. Mm -hmm. um, and then there would also need to be a minor amendment um, if the expansion is approved, similar to what happened with the initial SP, um, to allow for parking lot adjustments, review the final bus queuing, and um, the location of the of the playground. So that's the proposal. And um, switching gears to the staff analysis and the master plan, it is a bit of a a patchwork. Or there's a, three different designations: the existing school um, facility being designated institutional. We have this area surrounded. Um, by urban density designations, which we know could include secondary uses such as schools. And then we have um, the parcel that's proposed for expansion, office R&D flex with residential again off, uh, suggested as a secondary use. Um, so staff felt that this was um, an appropriate location. Um, we did our typical analysis that includes transportation planning and BNOT. And um, the community meeting was held. There were um, some questions and comments regarding transportation, um, noise, and there were a number of people that commented in support of the um, facility and uh, what it provides to, to the region in terms of um, services. So staff is recommending approval um, with conditions uh, for the school expansion that addresses the concept plan, maximum enroll, excuse me, maximum enrollment, hours of operation, things that we typically see with these uses, along with um, a carryover from the prior SP regarding signage that was recommended um, for bus for the bus queuing. Similar condition for uh, the special use permit for standalone parking um, and in general accord with the concept plan, um, reflecting the major elements to include the location of the parking areas. So that includes staff presentation. I have a suggested motion slide. When you get to that point, um, I didn't add the placeholder question slide, so. <laughs> but I'm ready for any questions should you have any um, of staff before you get to the applicants. Okay, questions for staff. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks. That was very helpful. Um, just a couple of quick questions. One is on the front page. It talks about proffers and conditions. So you're just referring to conditions, I guess. There are no proffers associated with this, right? That's correct. And then um, I apologize if I missed this, but the timing of the implementation of the offsite parking. Um, it set notes in here, the proposed parking area will only be necessary when the school expansion creates a need for employee parking. Is there a time? Man, I can ask the applicant that too. I'm just curious what the timing is relate, relative to that. Yeah, they'll probably discuss the timing of, of the Perfect. different phases of expansion. It's in their narrative um, as well. I just, I yeah. think we'll let them address that. Great, thank you. All right, other questions? Yeah, no, go ahead, sorry. So, you know, I have to sort of mention this because we're losing a C1 spot to uh, Joni Mitchell's yellow taxi lyrics here. And so for those of who don't know who that is, that's the whole today's paradise. They put in a parking lot instead of a mountain. Oh, you said Joni Mitchell. Well, that's Joni Mitchell. And the name like, of the wait, tune Joni is- Joni Mitchell's developing in Amarco. Well, yeah, you know, it's the name of the song is Yellow Taxi. So you have to sort of draw the line there. Okay. 
So, so did, did we have any conversation with economic development about losing a, a precious C1 spot? Or what I'm hoping to hear is that if there is someone to develop it, that they can put parking, relegated parking under a building, if that should happen here. Right. We're not, we're not losing it. I looked at it as, you know, we're allowing the school, you know, this would allow this, the option for the school to use it for just parking when they need it, but it doesn't preclude it from future development having either. Building, by, having, right? having, having a commercial spot. Right. So we're not, so we're not going to see the C1 commercial leave this on this particular um, uh, land use map. So it will remain C1, just it'll have a special use as a parking, as a parking area. That's correct. It'll have that additional use option. It's actually shown as urban density in the master plan. So this is probably one um, that, uh, so as far as, you know, losing C1, we designated it urban density in the land okay. use plan. Okay, my whole so. piece is, you know, we have very few places where we have commercial access right. to commercial property. Mm -hmm. And my piece is I, I I have to make a stink about that if we're losing if we're losing C1 property. Sure. That's your job. That's my job. And I know that the, the, the applicant will help me with my job. <laughs> okay. Any other questions for staff? Okay. If not, we're ready to hear from the applicant. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the commission. I'm Valerie Long with Williams Mullen, uh, representing the applicant, Virginia Institute of Autism. I am going to um, turn it over first to Ethan Long, who is the president and CEO, and he'll tell you a little bit more in his own words about their plans for the property, which he will tell much more eloquently uh, than I can. And then um, I'll finish up and address a few of the questions and clarify a few other points, if I may. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Valerie, and uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Ethan Long, no relation to Valerie, uh, but uh, we have worked together in the past. So um, I'm excited to talk to you about this plan because it really is, I, this is my 12th year at the Virginia Institute of Autism, and we are a nonprofit organization. We've been in existence for uh, since 1996, so we're going on our 26th year, and uh, we were founded right here in Charlottesville. Uh, we have a mission to serve uh, individuals who are struggling with the challenges of autism, and we do that through evidence-based practices. We are one of a handful of programs across the, the United States, uh, and internationally, really, for that matter, and this is the culmination of a vision that we have had for those last 12 years, certainly since I got here. Um, with the building that you saw, we're building off of the site from our uh, Center for Adolescent and Adult Autism Services. And I want to mention our student population. I know you had asked a little bit about that. We serve students. All of the students that come to our school program are, um, they have a diagnosis of autism or some related developmental disability, and they're experiencing significant challenges in the areas of uh, communication, uh, social interaction, and learning. So this student population is very different than what you might see if you just were to enter any public school. The students, um, in fact, we're an extension of the public school. So we're licensed by the Department of Education and the families don't pay private tuition. It's actually funded by the school districts and the localities with a little bit of the Office of Children's Services, which matches in order to provide a free and appropriate public education to our student population. So we, uh, about a third of our students, uh, come from the uh, Almar County and Charlottesville city uh, communities, but we also take students who are experiencing significant challenges from as far away as Fauquier County uh, over to um, Harrisonburg. Uh, so we kind of go north, south up 29 and then east, west for about an hour around um, our location currently. So um, the current School we have is over on Westwood Road, and we'd like to those we've outgrown some of those facilities, and the opportunity to be able to renovate this uh, uh, Jordan Building, as it's titled now, uh, is really exciting for us. Uh, partly because of the synergy that that would bring, uh, we have specialists that we employ. Not only do we have it's a unique model, and I'm sure I'm going to let Valerie Erner keep by talking to you about the parking, because we have more staff than we do students. Our staff are all specialists. We have a one-to-one -one model uh, and our, um, our frontliners are sort of uh, registered behavioral technicians, but we also have special educators 
We have um, behavior analysts, licensed behavior analysts. We have social workers, psychologists. It is really a truly uh, multidisciplinary team that works with our students. And our goal for all the students is ultimately to get them back to their public schools and in a condition where they can maintain in their public schools and in their communities. Um, this building in itself, some of the, the pieces that get me so excited, and I'm looking at the clock, I'll blow that out of the water. So you just gotta tell me when to stop. But what's so unique about this opportunity is when parents get the diagnosis, usually it's at an earlier age, they are beginning their journey and they don't quite know what they need or not need. And the fact that we have two separate buildings where the adults and the high schoolers are in one side so that they're not absolutely, because that may not be their journey, but they're into, able to come to a space that we can design and custom design for themselves. And I invite all of you, if you haven't had a chance to come and see what we've been able to do with the custom site design at uh, the current Center for Adolescent and Adult Autism Services. We call it the CAS building for short, because that's a mouthful. But we have that space really designed for autism. So the sensory needs, the, the corners, the um, reinforced walls, the egress so that it's wide, so that the kids can take some more time if they need it, uh, safely unloading the buses and getting kids to where they need, certain learning environments, classrooms that are designed to teach functional independent living skills. So we have a teaching classroom. We have actually an apartment that's a teaching apartment. Um, spaces like these we would create then in the, 485 Hillsdale building, which is very exciting for us. Of course, we'd aim it towards more of our elementary school age kids. So we're talking about five to age 14 in that ballpark. And we'd have special learning spaces where we could focus on the getting ready to learn in public school, spaces where we could have individual pull out working activities. Um, we'd look to have approximately nine classrooms, 10 classrooms focused on that. And then we would have a special unit that I think would be very unique. Honestly, I, I know of very few uh, schools that would offer this, but it would be a neurobehavioral classroom where we would leverage the expertise we have at UVA in the neurology and developmental peds department. We would be able to take students that are having significant challenging behavior, self-injury, very destructive behaviors, keep them in their homes, but have them come to us for their education, stabilize their medication, stabilize their behavioral uh, needs, ultimately, as they become successful, be able to transition them and matriculate them in throughout our programs into the right classroom they have. So it'd be a continuum of supports and services that we could offer. And this model, I got to tell you, it is so exciting for me because it's a culmination of a professional career and dream. And to be able to bring that to this community, and frankly, to leverage the horsepower that is at the University of Virginia, to be able to then share that model with other communities across the United States is really exciting. So, um, you know, I'm fired up about the project. I hope you are a little bit too. And I'll let Valerie answer some of the more detailed questions. Thanks. Thank you. I knew that he would do a much better job than me, and I was right. Um, let me just skip ahead here. So just so, since we're switching speech, sure. just say your name into the record for the minute. So. Sure, it's Valerie Long with Williams Mullen. Um, I would ask if we could show my screen here. I hope I've done, oh, there we go. Sorry, I didn't have it in slideshow mode. I, I didn't, pardon me, thank you. Um, we've covered all the comprehensive plan zoning. You all are familiar with that. You probably all know this area. Just for clarification, mm -hmm. the existing site is what uh, used to be the senior center for those who have not been out there. So um, just again, this is the existing site, existing SP. This is the proposed new location for the elementary school, obviously shared parking area. This is roughly the location of where the new playground would be located. And again, this is the standalone parking for if and when it's needed. And Mr. Bivens, your question, you're correct, or whoever mentioned it, that it would the C1 zoning would stay in place. Hopefully, this would eventually be developed with a commercial use of some sort or something else, and this parking could be integrated in. But it's of great comfort to know that um, as they move forward with their planning, that they will all they will have enough parking, no, especially given their unique uh, staffing needs and ratios. Uh, there is exists, obviously Hillsdale Drive was very recently improved and upgraded with sidewalks and bike lanes and crosswalks and a bus stop. There's the two sites together. Uh, again, this is the field where the uh, uh, 
overflow parking would be needed. And Mr. Missile, to answer your question, there is no set time. Essentially, when they when they get to that point, it's kind of if and when needed. And I think the timing for their capital campaign to raise yeah. the money for their okay. second phase of the elementary school is all uncertain at this time. Um, so, and we have lots of information about the, you know, how we arrived at the number of parking and teachers and staff and so forth. Probably this is the most of interest again, uh, just zoom in here. This is the existing building where the elementary school would go. We have a detailed um, bus drop off, as you can see, and go through that if you'd like. And again, the nice playground area, uh, there would be a fence and a sidewalk, and obviously it would be designed very carefully to ensure, keep the children separate from the buses and the cars and so forth. And a few examples of their indoor and outdoor play areas at their existing elementary school would be somewhat similar to that most likely. And the playground here would be actually slightly larger than the existing one. I think that is all that we had. I will happily leave this up. Um, if there are any questions, we're obviously happy to answer it. Um, sounds like you all are clear on everything and I won't take up time unnecessarily. Okay, yes. so other, uh, thank you very much. Sure. Uh, any questions for the applicant? Sure, okay. All right, uh, I know we'll start with Bonnie. Since... Not a question per se, just, just a comment, recommendation, not a condition. Um, the Meadow Creek is nearby. Um, hops given away from that, you're converting an area that's permeable surface to impervious surface. Anything you can do to capture stormwater on site, including, you know, if you have vegetative islands on there, putting the water in the landscaping areas instead of keeping it out, that sort of thing, okay. I greatly appreciate it. You're talking about on the future standalone parking site? There? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, anything that can be done to capture stormwater on site, and I'm sure staff has lots of great ideas that you can and work, work with, so. Absolutely, thank you. Great. Well, and I imagine the new stormwater regulations would probably incentivize that. Uh, but, but they would, although, yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, yeah. Just, well, leave it, yeah, <laughs> okay. Jonathan Showalter with Timmins Group is here with us. I should have introduced him as well. And so he's obviously hearing your conversations uh, that when, if and when they get to the point of needing uh, that site site plan stage, we appreciate that input and we'll keep those in mind. Thank okay. you. All right. We'll go, we'll just go this. Uh, yeah. So I just, I just have a sort of a, a sort of a structural question. Is there, will there be an internal or there'll be a, a site specific or a site contained way to get people so people can communicate between the two buildings so they can walk be, without having to use the external sidewalk? Yes, they haven't. We haven't really gotten to that point yet. Okay. But obviously, during you can see there the bus circulation route. Right. That's... But but otherwise, and um, I'm okay, again, they haven't gotten to that yes, part. But yes, is fine. Okay. Yes, recognizing that will be an important issue to help everybody walk through that parking lot to safely. Keep people and, off the road. To keep yes. People yes. off of that road. The other question, if I'm understanding, so you're not changing, you're not changing the use of your building up Greenbrier. The Greenbrier building is still going to remain Correct. a Greenbrier building for you. Correct. Right. Fine, so I understand that. And I sh I'm sure you know this, but the um, the vagabond geese that have somehow or another taken up their, their taken us as their place that they're going to hang out, um, that's one of their favorite places. So as my, as my oh. colleague is talking about green space, just recognize you've got a um, a group of geese that believe that that belongs to them. <laughs> and are you speaking specifically They're about not represented the at this hearing? I'm talking about the the proposed sidewalk, uh, the proposed parking lot. Oh, got it. Thank you. I have I'm familiar with the geese problem over on sort of the opposite the opposite mm -hmm. end of Hillsdale, but I didn't no, realize it was extended this far. That location there, there's a there's a geese gang that that, that <laughs> okay. Got All it. Right. Duly noted. They'll, they'll, they'll be very careful about the errant geese gang. All right. Thank you. Any other any other uh, questions of a serious nature for the applicant? <laughs> okay. All right. So if I thank you very much. 
Um, so if I understood the recommendation, we would now go on to the second presentation and then we would have one public hearing. Is that what you were? It was my understanding that there was a single presentation by both staff and the applicant. Oh, so there's not yet another presentation. That's for, correct. Yeah. The, the, the intent was to combine them into a single. Like we did for Clifton. Okay, I, I understand. I just didn't know if I had to then call up the next letters and say, now we're talking. No, ma'am. The only thing that would be separate are the, are the motions for each of the, the separate okay. special use permits. All right. I think I overcomplicated what you were trying to tell me. It's been a very, very long day. All right, so with that, um, we'll then open the public hearing. <laughs> Would anyone from the public who is currently invisible like to come forward? Is there anyone online that would um, like to speak to this item, Carolyn? No, there is not. All right, so I'll now close the public hearing. <laughs> uh, would the applicant like to add any uh, other comments? Okay, all right, so bringing it back to ourselves for discussion. Thoughts from the commission. I would just say that I'm pleased to know that that we are not losing inventory from from the from from the commercial because that area right there just you know there's that farther bit that at some point there's going to be a, a, a connected route right. from whatever that road is I guess hydraulic all the way up north and so this becomes an alternative. An, an so you're just talking about the future traffic volume, future traffic volume, increasing. right? And that this is going to be a perfect place for somebody to have have uh, a commercial office space there that goes with the other side right. of the right. of that development, not necessarily for them. Well, I'm, I'm, a, yeah, making an apartment building with commercial space on the bottom. Right. I'm so there. And I'm I'm pleased to see the the use of existing urban space and and the fact that you're you're working on an existing footprint. Um, I do hope that the the playgrounds that are put in can be as green as possible. Um, I'm sure you're well aware, uh, given your experience, that there's a, a lot of research out there on the importance of access to green space for people who have learning disabilities or uh, other behavioral issues that that uh, helps them tremendously. And it's a super paved area, uh, except for that place across the street. So just trying to think about how you can perhaps somehow green that up a little bit to make that a calm environment, even just for arriving or for playing outside. But I'm not going to get into designing your site for you and you don't need that. Um, uh, so it seems like we're uh, pretty much in favor of this. It uh, seems like a very appropriate use and it's, it's helping a, a business combine and become more, much more efficient in their provision of services with a, a very worthwhile mission. So um, unless there's further discussion on this application, uh, we can move forward to the two different motions that are before us. So we have two different motions to make, and I want to see if there's a commissioner willing to make the first one. I'm happy to make the first one. Um, so I move to recommend approval of SP 2021-09. Notice how I got that lingo from Staff. Virginia <laughs> Institute of Autism expansion for the reasons stated in the staff report and with the staff re recommended conditions. And if I could just make a correction and clarification with Ms. Ragsdale, this is actually SP 2022-09. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Oh, my apologies. Well, it, it's it's misprinted on the screen, but it, but just to, to clarify. Right your, it's, it's correct in your agenda, so yes. we're not in trouble. So, with so the SP number, just to clarify, is 2022 09 with the conditions that stay in the staff board. Is that correct, Mr. Missel? Yes, that was correct. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. All right, the motion's been seconded. Any further discussion on this motion? Hearing and seeing none, I will go ahead and ask if we can uh, call the vote, please. All right, Ms. Firehawk? Aye. Mr. Bivens? Aye. Mr. Missel? Aye. Mr. Carazana? Aye. Mr. Murray? Aye. Mr. Claiborne? Aye. Thank you. All right, that motion uh, passes unanimously. And now we have to have a separate, separate second motion on the standalone parking SP 20220000010. Would someone like to make a motion for that? So moved. All right, Mr. Bibbins made a motion. Is there a second? So, Mr. Bivens, is to, just to clarify, the, the form of the motion suggested that it be with the conditions stated in the staff report, and for the reasons stated in the staff report, is that your motion? That is absolutely my motion. <laughs> Thank you for absolutely clarifying that. And is I, there a second? I second that motion. All right, Mr. Carazano, second it. Is there any further discussion on this motion? 
Uh, hearing none, Carolyn, would you call the vote? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Firehawk? Aye. Mr. Claiborne? Aye. Mr. Murray? Aye. Mr. Carizana? Aye. Mr. Missile? Aye. Mr. Bivens? Aye. Thank you. All right, thank you. So uh, both items, SP2022, many zeros nine, and SP2022, many zeros one zero, both have passed unanimously by the Planning Commission. We'll move forward to the Board of Supervisors at a date to be determined. Best of luck to you. All right, and we'll move on now to committee reports. And we'll start down at this end of the dais with Mr. Carazano. Do you have a committee report for us of any kind? <laughs> Um, well, the MPO did meet last okay. week and they, they started to meet in person again. Ooh. I was unable to make the meeting in person, but I was there virtually. Um, we had some elections of new officials. No. <laughs> Although uh, Mr. McDermott is not here, but he tried. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know what that means, but keep going. <laughs> I yeah, that. <laughs> you threw me off. Okay, sorry. You, you had an MPO meeting. Yes. <laughs> so, I, I would. I mean, the, the one thing besides the the uh, the elections is they're looking at their schedule um, and how we we integrate with the comp plan. Uh, some of their activities. So I think that that was one of the takeaways and they're hoping to look at a schedule that aligns um, with, with some of the activities that they're that they're looking at and how they can inform the comp plan. So a lot of the conversation was was around. Does this need to be another conversation between uh, Mr. Rapp and their representative to figure that out? Mr. Rapp and their Charles Rapp is, is yeah, he yeah, does yeah. our scheduling to figure out uh, the schedule of the comp plan and where they how they could. Well, Mr. McDermott is is in in that, so I, I think he is going to work to help okay. coordinate. All right. that. Okay, so yeah. that's an underway. All right. Yeah. Okay. That was my take. Thank you, Chair. Uh, didn't you have a, did you have a CAC meeting or sensor? No. We did, we had a 5th Street and Avon Street CAC that I was not able to attend. Okay. Neither was I. <laughs> so, okay. All right. Mr. Bivens? We had our first in-person um, uh, Places 29 meeting, of which we um, received a an update from Mr. Stewart, on, Lance Stewart on, unfortunately, I don't remember what it was on. Well, we receive on 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 um on facility on things that are happening within our district around sidewalks and 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 um, items that were happening. I think at the at the school, but more important, I shouldn't say more importantly, but more exciting was a conversation around um, a master plan that the school system did on the Lambs Lane campus. Those of you who may know it, it's Albemarle High School. It's Jack Ju. Oh, is, is it? No, it's is it Jack? It's, no, it's Journey. And oh, Greer, and then there's a fourth school, which I cannot remember the name of the school, but it's a small footprint school that sits behind the Boys and Girls Club, which has been constructed that that caters as a regional school for children with uh, learning learning uh, needs. And so this is really an, an exciting plan, the Lambs Lane Master Plan that is right now still Master Plan. And remember, it is under the school's jurisdiction, but hopefully at, at an appropriate point, it'll come before us so that we can just have a, have knowledge of what's happening in the in the community. And 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 it's it's a it's a major step forward if the school system can somehow or another find a way to put even portions of it in their CIP. So that's, what, and if you're interested, you can go look online because and I'll see if I can figure out where that link is and send it to uh, council. How can I just send the link? Or do I have to send it to a staff person to send the link? No, that'd be fine. It, there'd be planning commission at albemarle.org. It should go to all the members okay. of the commission. Okay, I don't want to do anything to cause a meeting. Nope, uh, reply to all is fine. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, that, thanks. That, that's actually great to hear. One quick question on that. Have in the and I can look at it in the master plan, but have they looked at potentially relocating some of the services that they have. perhaps don't need to they, be? They have. Make something. sure that's coming into oh, your mic. They, they have during the plan. They, they and and so the the really I don't you know you you all will know who the bodies were the professionals that did it. I can just tell you that they it was it was enjoyable working with them, but I don't know their their sort of professional names. But what they did a nice job doing was sort of is looking at how they move through a package of, of, of renovations or a package of changes. Um, and one of the key pieces is about moving um, facilities, uh, bus bus um, garaging, and uh, the maintenance and fueling of county vehicles, mostly buses, the first responder and police vehicles, off of that campus someplace else, mm -hmm. that then frees up and then a good amount of space, but also stops having the one campus in our community that is the bus depot, which I don't believe that Monticello or Western would allow a bus depot on their campuses. And so I'm hoping as this starts to roll out that all of those environmental concerned people will just stand up and say, this is the right decision to move those facilities off of that campus. Okay, thanks. Well, I, I did uh, miss my CAC meeting as well because I wanted to go to the um, comprehensive plan meeting, uh, which was held at uh, Yancey School. And I actually was really uh, pleasantly surprised at the excellent attendance. Uh, There's a lot of robust conversations. Uh, I'll probably have some follow up comments for, for staff. Um, there was a, a few instances where I thought maybe we could have explained better what the comprehensive plan actually was. Uh, you know, because it's called a comprehensive plan by our legal language, it sounds like a plan to do something, whereas our comprehensive plan is really an aspirational guide. Yes. It's not really, so people are saying like, I would like to have my utilities undergrounded and I would like, you know, I don't, I think there was a bit of a disconnect um, and then there was a, a lack of knowledge about several things that were going on in the southern part of the county, like uh, our new convenience center. People were asking for that. And some of the facilitators didn't know that one was already approved and planned. So um, just a few, I just have like a few cliff notes for the facilitators of that, but it was a really good discussion and I really enjoyed it. And uh, I, I would go again and again. Anyway, um, so that's all I have, except to say uh, that the Historic Preservation Committee should have met yesterday, but we had our third uh, non-meeting due to lack of quorum, third in a row. So for three months now we have not met. I suggested that perhaps we need to go to an every other month format, uh, which might require some changing of the charter, but also to suggest that a stern letter go out to participants reminding them that they really need to be able to attend these meetings uh, because otherwise uh, we need to get new people who, who can show up. Um, I know three people came from Scottsville, Stanton, oh. Crozet, to attend the meeting and took off work to do it. And so people lost time and money. And I it cost me $300 because I had to go to Costco since I lost free time. <laughs> so it was an expensive cancellation for myself. Uh, I'm just kidding. I didn't have to go, but you know, it felt, there I was. It felt good. I felt good. Yeah, I, I had free time, so I went shopping. All right, so with that, I'll pass the baton. Uh, the, so the Pantop CAC met in person yesterday, and unfortunately I was not able to make that one. So I'm on the bad list at the moment. <laughs> well, just don't miss three months in a row. Yeah. Okay. All right, Mr. Murray. Yes, the Crozet CAC met um, and had a nice presentation <laughs> from um, Amal Parks and Rec about, you know, they talked about various greenways and upgrades to parks going right. on. And um, there's also a brief update on the um, Montclair stream. Um, in which we were informed that there was a um, a contractor was independent contractor was hired to evaluate the status of the stream, mm -hmm. and we are waiting what that contractor tells us that stream is or if it's a stream. Yeah, I think I think the the hiring. I'm glad to hear that they were finally hired. I knew they were going to be uh, they were going to find someone to do that. I think the idea was that it would be someone independent. Um, to increase trust for whatever that opinion was it has to do with whether it's a perennial or intermittent stream. How is it a real stream or just a strange trickle? 
I'm not questioning whether it's a stream. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying that there's been a lot of strange, strange claims floating around. So and and, we'll, and as we'll as around. the commission knows, it's an item that's going to be back before the commission yes. eventually. So we, right. we can leave it for when it comes back before the commission to have a fuller discussion. Correct. And I have no opinion at this moment. Okay. All right. So is that it? Um, also met with the Albemarle County Natural Heritage Committee. Guys. Also okay. met with Albemarle County Natural Heritage Committee for ongoing review of the Biodiversity Action Plan. Okay. And um, also um, wishing our staff representative goodbye, um, um, Kim Biasoli, if I'm saying her last name correctly. Um, Kim, the- Basioli. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, and so she is she's leaving, um, she left the county. And so our new staff representative is gonna be Scott Clark, who many of you may already know. Yes, are we are we going to refill the position? Kim was a natural resource specialist for the, um, with our okay. county, so she was involved in a lot of different things. Um, are we? Do you know if the county's rehiring? Did that's yes? that's our hope. Okay. Yes. Um, does can anyone answer yes. that definitively? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Great. All right. So we had uh, the next item on the agenda was to be a report from Mr. Rapp, who is uh, away this evening, can't be with us. I don't know if anyone else was going to give, you were going to give it. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I had two things, the recap um, of board items that you've um, acted on from the September 7th and the 21st meetings. It's okay. The uh, y'all's earlier September meeting was canceled. And then um, seems to be a theme this evening, quorum. So we wanted to talk about um, Thanksgiving week when we got to that, when we get to that point. Um, so September 7th, the board approved the um, Ferdy Weck deal rezoning. If you recall, that was the one off old Lynchburg, which was um, for one additional lot. I think it was to oh, R4 yes, near, near Whittington. Okay. Yeah, so that, that was, was in June. That was, mm -hmm. that was in June. So that may have slipped your memory. <laughs> the other um, action at the September 7th meeting was on the Heritage, which was a little bit more recent in July. And the board approved approved that as well. And they still call it the Heritage? They they also have noted that they will be rebranding, re that that was a placeholder. Um, and uh, oh But that was approved. And that was for the residential rezoning. And then on the 21st was the Southwood public hearing last week. Um, as you imagine, there were there's a lot of discussion that was before you in April. Um, and the applicant had submitted um, some revisions since then to address some of the concerns. Um, so the board held the public hearing and had some discussion and requested some more information. They're expected to take action um, and the item to be scheduled no later than November 2nd. Okay. Um, so those changes included an increase in the school site, um, revision to the sunset clause. There was a lot of discussion about the sales price at the meeting. There was an offer to establish and not to exceed sale price. Um, and so mainly it'll be staff bringing back more information about, about funding implications, I think, for the public hearing. Oh, We're right. working on that. Okay. Um, Get Could you mention started. more about the sunset clause? Pardon? Could you mention more about the sunset clause? It was extended to July 2027, okay. which the site would be available for purchase by the county until that date, which which works with the school's this is the planning school and site. planning. The school site, remember? The elementary school site proper. Oh. <laughs> that I, I went into a little more detail with that one because I thought you might be interested, but of course you can take a look when it's online. Okay, thank you. All right, so with that, the next item is to talk about the draft planning commission rules of procedure. So Madam Chair, uh, Andy Herrick with County Attorney's Office, it's a pleasure to present uh, to you on this subject. And I, uh, I think it's appropriate because first of all, I wanna thank you for allowing me to appear remotely uh, at our meeting last month. Um, although I'm not a member of the body, so the rules of remote participation don't um, apply to me as a non-member of the body. Um, but as you all may recall, uh, pre-COVID, the rules of procedure for the Planning Commission did not have an allowance for remote participation. Um, but with the um, uh, as the Planning Commission was one of the first public bodies in Albemarle to return to in-person meetings, we thought it appropriate to try to uh, adopt a remote participation policy as soon as possible, even though we saw ahead that the state law was going to be updated as of September 1st of this year, which now has occurred. Um, so just by way of, of brief history, 
the, the commission does have in effect right now a remote participation policy that allows for individuals to appear remotely um, for certain reasons. And that is in effect, and I understand that we may actually need to invoke it at the October 11th meeting. Um, but in the meantime, as I've indicated, the state law has been updated effective September 1st. Uh, we've proposed um, some updates to the rules of procedure to reflect the latest changes in state law. Substantively, there are not a lot that affect the planning commission. Uh, there is an allowance that says uh, in state law um, that says that if a uh, if a public body is meeting more than 60 miles away from the residents, that that is reason enough to allow someone to appear remotely. Um, that state law applies to all public bodies in the state, and so it's primarily applicable to um, the state public bodies rather than the county public right. bodies. Because I, I don't sixty miles away from here and not be out. I, I don't anticipate a, a, an Albemarle County Planning Commission meeting that's going to take place more than sixty miles away from the residence <laughs> of any of, of of the commissioners. Um, but in any event, that 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 is there, and okay. and we've added it so that in case there ever is such a meeting, that that's that's allowed. Um, the other thing uh, that state law was amended to allow that unfortunately doesn't apply to the planning commission is all virtual meetings. So there are two types of, of meetings that are now have now been liberalized, one of which is the individual remote participation and the other of which is all virtual meetings. But unfortunately, the new state law specifically excludes uh, local governing bodies, planning commissions, uh, board to zoning appeals, ARBs and school boards from engaging in all virtual meetings. Um, hopefully that'll be a, a legislative item for the board to pursue in Richmond in, in upcoming General Assembly sessions to allow them, uh, to, to encourage the assembly to allow local governing bodies and local planning commissions to meet all virtually. But for the time being, that's that's simply not allowed. And so that's you'll notice that's not part of the rules amendment. Uh, but in any event, um, uh, staff has drafted uh, suggested rules amendment to continue to track state law. Um, if the commission chooses to proceed with the rules amendment, it can't be adopted at this meeting under the rules of procedure, any amendment to the rules, there has to be one meeting's worth of notice, so that the soonest that this could be adopted would be at the next meeting, if the commission chooses to pursue it. Um, so, so if again, if the, if the commission is interested, my recommendation would be that there be a motion made and approved to put this on the to put the approval of the revised rules on the next uh, meeting agenda. So we need a motion to put this on the October 11th meeting agenda. At, at, the, at, the, at the next meeting, yes. At the next meeting. We that, 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 that there be a motion to put this on the agenda for the next meeting, not naming it October 11th in the event that October 11th fails to occur but due to a lack of quorum or something. So the next available meeting, presumably October 11th, would be the time at which this there'd be a vote on the revised rules if the commission is interested in pursuing it. Sure. And would the vote, would the vote at whatever that meeting is take place at the beginning of the meeting and then be in effect for that meeting? No, it, that because the, 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 the old rules or the existing rules would be in effect for that meeting. And then, okay, gotcha. I just, I mean, it, it, now that I think about it, 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 it could be if it needed to be. And I, and now that I think about it, I think that some of the other County public bodies have, have done that to where the first item of business at their meeting was the adoption of the rules that then let remote participants in. The planning commission already has a remote participation policy that allows that. So uh, it's it's not it's not necessary to make that first on the next meeting agenda. Okay, understood. All right. So we do need to make a motion to consider this to meeting. put this on the next meeting agenda. Yes, ma'am. So is there any just any uh, other questions about this draft policy or comments? Okay, we've all read it. Okay, so is there a motion to include this on the next available meeting of the Planning Commission? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Uh, I'll just note that, um, I, well, I'll, I'll save it for new business. Okay, so I won't note anything. <laughs> Carolyn, can we call the vote? <clears throat> yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. ma'am. Okay, Ms. Firehawk? Yes. Mr. Bivens? Yes. Mr. Claiborne? Aye. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Missel? Aye. Mr. Carazano? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So this item will be placed on our next available agenda. All right. And then under uh, additional, I guess, new business. So 
just to let you all know, just to remind you, uh, if I haven't told you already, I, I have to be present, I have to stand in that position for a different local government on October 11th. So, so I will not be able to be here, nor can I participate remotely. So I will be completely gone. Um, but we can come in and give you a hard time. <laughs> yeah, sure. If you want to drive to Jameson no, no, County. No, we can do remote. No, you have to we be can, here we running can, this meeting. Sign up. Uh, Mr. Claiborne is also going to be away, but because he is not standing at a dais, he will be participating remotely. So I believe at the beginning of the meeting, you actually have to agree to first let him in remotely. Well, firstly, <laughs> Charles Rapp will have to open the meeting as the secretary and then vote to let him in remotely. Then you will uh, uh, then vote if it's acceptable for Mr. Bivens be or be another <laughs> commissioner to chair the meeting. I've already asked Mr. Bivens if he's willing and able. Well, well Mr. Claiborne can chair the commission uh, meeting remotely. Yes, ma'am. Well, I think, yeah, I think so. Right. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> well, it, you can decide that at the time, depending on what his remote situation is like. But but just as a reminder, there does need to be a quorum physically yeah. present. So there is- I'm actually going to just get to that. Right. So because if you can do the numbers, you can tell that it would be very tight to have quorum. So that means that- I will not be here on the election. Ah, so that is a question. Will we make quorum? I guess so. you you will not count for quorum, quorum because you're remote. So it'll be one, two, three. So no quorum. So no October 11th meeting. Not meet October 11th then. Sorry, I'm not making all kinds of pieces. Okay, well. Okay, well, that it is what it is. I'm sorry. I have to present to a board. I, on a vote. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not something I could change. Either. Yeah. Okay. Understand. All right. So, we will, um, we I, I mean, I I don't know what the what the board schedule is for uh, appointing the the vacant commissioner. I mean, I suppose if if a if the that's, vacant that's if, been part of the problem is that we don't have uh, that position filled, and so we this will be a second time. I mean, so I, I mean, it's it's conceivable that if the vacancy is appointed before October 11th, then that then that person to, then that could be the fourth person for the quorum, but. But I, but I can't speak to that. All right. Well, I will communicate with that board member of the situation and inquire as to whether there's any hope for that position being filled in a timely manner. Well, yeah. I don't know what else was on the but October even, 11th besides the um, cell. Uh, there's a cell tower for my district, actually. Well, I was going to say we have a full. Um, the legal ads have already run for the October 11th meeting. It can um, still be canceled. But there was a full agenda. We'll figure it out. <laughs> but there was a cell tower. There was a Scottsville substation expansion, Crown Orchard farm worker housing, and then of course the rules of procedure. Um, and then we have a we had a pretty full um, October twenty fifth. So um, we'll figure it out. <laughs> um, our applicants uh, will explain it to our applicants, and um, we'll figure it out. Um, right. Well, it, it, we had six six SPs come in for uh, one month sure. at one time, and they're. Um, some more preschools that we were able to move through the process and the ordinance um, indicates that we must do that within 90 days um, if they want to go straight to public hearing, but we'll figure it out. Okay, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll ask uh, about the vacancy position, see if there can be possibly some movement. Remember, I'm the last to know. I was not aware that, that Lonnie was joining us until he sat in the chair. So maybe there's already someone appointed. <laughs> Is it possible or within the, I guess, the rules to, to move a meeting to like the third Tuesday, like in a case like this? So you're not pushing somebody? Yeah. Uh, I, I would need to look into how much advance notice is required to, to move a meeting. Um, as Ms. Ragsdale has indicated, if the ads have already run for October 11th, it may be, we may not be able to do it uh, at this stage, but but I'll, I'll we'll take a look at that. Sorry, I didn't know that we didn't have quorum, but um, it's okay. It's okay. It happens. We well, it's just a fact. I cannot I cannot not do my other thing. So, and Sir Mr. Carizano cannot not do his other thing. All happen. right. So with that, um, we will move on. And is there any old business? Bring up anything from the past? No, I do. I have an old new business. And we consider. never know what old and new is. I, what's old and new for you? I have an old and new thing for us to consider. Okay. So I was I remarked with I remarked that our supervisors for the Southwood were able to give themselves some space after the public hearing to be able to consider voting their vote and their position on Southwood 
away from mm -hmm. the emotions. Mm -hmm. so let me just put it that way. And I'm wondering if there are how we would begin to think about being able to, to create some space for us to be able to have a public hearing, but then be able to deliberate perhaps the next meeting or however that works for us. And here's why I'm posing that. I can imagine that there will be numerous issues that come before this commission as we become, as we move deeper into the comp plan. And I would feel more comfortable being able to hear the rich bounty, receive the rich bounty of public, a public comment, but not have to vote at that particular moment to be able to vote after I've had a moment to reflect on it um, privately away from the um, away from the convert the rich conversation. Well it strikes me that you could do that by having a work session right. where you were just having a discussion and you can allow public comment during a work session. But at that work session you you can decide you're not taking any votes. It's just to discussion. It's a community okay. discussion. And then you could schedule you still have to have a public hearing later when you're going to vote on something, but you would have already heard a lot of the thoughts and had time to reflect and research and ponder and whatnot. Yeah, I, I would say that that would, at least coming from sort of the position of an applicant in the past, you know, it's that would probably be a better scenario than having a delay between when the public hearing occurs and the deliberation and then the vote. Pushing that another, pushing that out further. Would yeah, be, I mean, I if we're so. having a public hearing, we're having a public hearing, but, yeah. you know, you could have, there are some items that make sense for a work session and comprehensive That's plan right. policies are a, a perfect example of that. It, uh, it, and from my perspective, it's working backwards from the deadline. So the deadline is 90 days from referral to the commission, that the, the commission is, is given 90 days to make a recommendation. So if, if the commission wishes to, to build an additional time for consideration, my suggestion would be, and, and this would be something that, that would have to be coordinated with staff, but that realizing that the vote, a final vote has to be taken within that 90 days, then you would schedule backwards a public hearing further, further back. Further back from the deadline. Correct. Rather, rather than, say, scheduling a, a, a public hearing at the last available date before the 90th day, you would you would schedule the vote on the last available date before the 90th day, but then the public hearing may be at the Planning Commission meeting before that. That's, okay. that's where I was going. So yeah, I, I, it's not possible to segment a public hearing and a vote on an item? It, it is. It is, as long as the deadlines are met. Okay. That's interesting. I mean, a, a public hearing must be held. Uh, but but the vote need not take place uh, on the night of the public hearing. That's really intriguing. I, because thought, I, I can think of a number of items where I wished I would have had more time to go. I think that, that. Um, we can look at that. I'm hearing two different things. There's the development applications and there's the comp plan, which we control the comp plan schedule. So I'm less concerned about that. But we are mindful of when an item is really ripe for a work session. Um, you know, we may have some of those that come forward. Some applicants are willing to extend the time for action beyond the 90 days with the resubmittal process. But when an application is submitted, it is the applicant that is driving the clock and in control of it until you take action. That's the way the ordinance is. I don't know if there are any options, Andy. And that's why we always say the applicant will have to request deferral and they sit there and they wait to kind of gauge and they'll often just ask at the last minute, like we did for um, Old Ivy, I believe it was, you know, they, they're they deliberating with their client. So I'm not asking, so it's two things that helps with some clarity there. I'm not speaking, I use the comp plan because I don't know the full development thing, this, this full suite of things that come to us before it develops. I could not, I could name, I could, I could, I could ratchet off some historical pieces that have come before us that I thought it would be helpful to be, to not have to take a vote after having, have, and, and also try to digest what amounted to several hours of public comment. I would like to have some space to not have to do that. So I can do both of those. My piece on that is that what what I'm exploring is not a delay of the process. What I'm exploring is to perhaps give the commission on certain on at certain times an issue at a time that still allows us to vote when we would vote, which would be the 90th day or whatever it is. But to back the process up, as as council saying, and that perhaps means having a conversation. I mean, we have we have a couple of key things. 
We typically know what happens at, at, at the CACs if something goes before a CAC. It's very, I think it becomes clear to us what we're going to see in this room, what typically comes out of CACs. We also know that staff has the, the, what I would say, the unique ability to have their finger on the pulse of what kind of um, excitement or enthusiasm might be around a particular issue. And so talking to in, in, in conjunction with the two chairs to be able to say this is something that you might want to consider having a public hearing separate from the vote. So there's a, there's a bunch of ways that we can signal this. I'm, I'm just simply bringing up that since we just dealt with Selfwood and I saw what, the, I saw what um, our supervisors did with Selfwood, that I would have benefited from having some space between the public hearing and the vote. Because we were at, I think we were at something like a three or four hour, maybe a four or five hour public hearing. And it just felt like it would have been nice to sort of, okay, absorb that and then come back to the very next meeting within the sure. time frame and vote as opposed to going, mm -hmm. so what were those? Oh, so there's the issues about you personally, but what does that have to do with the land use and the conflating of all that for me personally? So, so in a way, the Board of Supervisors had a little bit more of that luxury in that case because the, the way the calendar works is that the Planning Commission has to make its recommendation within 90 days of submission. But then the Board of Supervisors has to make its recommendation within a year of when of when it's referred to the Planning Commission. So so the so the so the Board of Supervisors has one year okay. minus the 90 days that the planning minus the 90 days. minus the 90 days that the Planning Commission has. Well, maybe there's a way to figure this out. Maybe there isn't. But I just thought if there's going to be issues that come before us that it would be nice for us to have, or nice for me to have, just a moment to be able to think about what I've just heard. Yeah, I, I know there's somewhere um, we've had sort of point counterpoint. I can think of several applications where people got up and made claims and said, I've researched this and these are the facts, and but we have no way to verify what they were saying. Um, and because and, they were not the applicant, they were like, I'm a citizen, but I researched the OSHA regs and I said this or whatever they said. And as Ms. Ragsdale indicated, we have no control over whether the applicant agrees or doesn't agree to a, to a deferral. I mean, if the applicant does not agree to a deferral, then the planning commission has no choice but to take the vote. I, I think the only way we could reasonably handle that is if um, we knew there was something that was coming up and we knew it was going to be really complicated, that we would ask the applicant to do a work session with us. Yeah. And because right. we have done that for we some, have done that, yeah. we have done that, and it's gave given us a chance to grapple with some of the complicated issues where a vote is not before us, and then it gives the applicant the ability to go. Well, let me go look into that. Let me think. Let me come back to you with with some ideas for how we might do that. So it it has helped with some complicated ones. Sometimes there are things though that I will say I thought that thing wasn't controversial, and then the day before we get. 50 emails and all of a sudden something's bubbled up and it's now this big thing that we thought was not a big deal. We so. probably can't avoid them all, but I, no. I, I do think that, you know, particularly in Southwood, there's been a couple others where after, you know, four or five hours, um, we're trying to craft language to send to the board on some recommendations. And, you know, sometimes that's a bit difficult when our, our brain after a full day's work and then another part is is maybe not, hear, not, not quite you there. So I, I think <laughs> I, I think we would be well in the county would probably be better served uh, and 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 the commission would be better uh or the super board of supervisor would be better served if we, from our recommendations if we perhaps could create some space and think about that and uh so maybe having the work sessions the other thing about the work sessions is that you may not get as many people right in the work sessions is that typically i mean we we don't seem to get a lot it, of it public gives more yeah it's they true come, although they come when you're going to have a hearing had some work sessions where we had 35 people sitting in that room in room 241 all, right, right some standing room only um so i'll i will talk with with charles rap about that as yeah. he, i mean i there are probably ones in the pipeline even now that we might already yeah, know. I mean, we won't count, cover them all, but I think if there's sure. some that we know that we would benefit, and, and again, I think the Board of Supervisors would benefit, the county would benefit, if we had a little bit of space to craft our thoughts, and then I don't know how that comes in terms of the deliberation next meeting, we would have to have the deliberation, but we would be, you know, I think better prepared uh, to do that. Yeah, and I just, uh, not to sound like a broken record, but I just think we have to be cognizant of the applicant and yeah. what especially on large projects where they have spent a lot of time getting groups in to speak with us. 
um, that, you know, I'm not sure how the whole process would play out if the applicant doesn't decide in that meeting that they're willing to defer. This isn't a deferral. No, this and is, no, no, no. Not this is something you've got to have it. within their 90 days. So my okay. understanding so, is we have so what we need to do is work with. Yeah, I think this is something we can talk about um, and bring right. up again. It's, yeah. like, it's something we understand. And we know you were put in that position with Southwood. Yeah. Um, but right now, you know, we can go over the process a little bit more. I don't know if you want to do that this evening, yeah, but I mean, no, I don't understand understand that I don't we're limited by the 90 days and what we have to accomplish in that yeah. 90 days in terms of advertisements. That's fine. The community meetings at the CACs are only happening every other month. We went to that concept of every other month for the CACs and then the other off month, a special topic. I don't know that that's going to, I'm seeing where, you know, like I said, when we had the six SPs come in, that that gets a little crunched to get yeah. Get a community meeting in, but I think we, you know, obviously I'm taking lots of notes because Charles couldn't be here, and we can we can discuss it again. We we're not going to figure this out tonight, but go ahead. Or to vote a zoning administrator, director of zoning. Um, I just want to be careful that we manage our expectations correctly. Once the applicant submits, that shot clock starts. Yep. As Miss Ragsdale pointed out earlier, we have about eight applications backing up right now so when we talk about delaying that we are stuck with uh, and i think miss ragsdale did an excellent job of explaining our burden as far as advertising so there's 30 days right there that comes off of that 90 days so as uh, i think it's a great idea to get with um mr rap and talk with him about those expectations and our staff resources yeah again we'll, with we'll the talk, we'll talk with them. we have a we have a meeting uh, every Monday before we have a, a meeting here. We have a planning meeting with him. So he, we missed it this week because he's not feeling well. So we'll I'll, I'll follow up with him. Okay. Yeah, the, the deadlines are in place to make sure that the applicant moves through the process. Yeah, so we want to be very conscious of that. Expectations and all yeah. kinds of other things on them, and you guys do too. Thank you. You are heard. Okay. All right, with that, um, I think we did everything we were supposed to do this evening. There was one more thing. Um, oh, sorry to interject. The week of Thanksgiving, the November 22nd meeting, I mentioned that at the wrong time. Um, but that was, um, you know, we need to think ahead to October, the week of Thanksgiving, November 22nd, a meeting is scheduled. Um, we have an applicant wondering if we're going to be holding that or not, and we needed to see if we would have a quorum. Um, it sounds like we're going to need to have that meeting um, I don't, if we can. <laughs> I don't I don't know that people take a whole week off of Thanksgiving. Um it's a Tuesday, the Tuesday before. We're just trying to see. I'll just be in my classroom in the morning wondering where half my students went. I'll be here. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, I'll be here. Well, I'll be here. So we're not aware of any conflicts at this time. Yeah, one who's looking at his father. Are you going to be here? Talk to me. Oh. Lonnie. Oh, I don't, I don't <laughs> have any. <laughs> that we will we will all be sure. here. We will not we will not be <laughs> away. <Are you laughs> November 22nd. Um but I have that right. I can That's be. not a time when the, those of us with jobs have lots of clients who want to meet with us. <laughs> Hold on. We want turkey sandwiches. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So, yes, we will all be here. That's fine. Okay. All right. So, going once, going twice. All right. I adjourn this planning commission to a date to be, de to, to be determined. Is that what I do? Since we don't know if we're having October 11th, I, I believe it should be adjourned to October 11th, just in case uh, any commissioners' plans change and we do wind up having a quorum. So, all right. So, adjourn this meeting of the Planning Commission to October 11th, 2022. Thank you. Good night. Night, Godspeed. <laughs> I gotta go down there.